Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. So it's demo day. Now what's really interesting, even though I've got a really small channel, take the Clayton for example, four people have said, based on your videos, I've ordered a demo of the Clayton, so I wanna see how it works. And two of them have actually said, we bought a Clayton. Merlot going through. Expert bit of driving by Matthew. Here she comes. Who guessed it? Class Scorpion. So he specially designed this trailer. It's a bit of a Frankenstein. So the keys are data tagged, which is fun. Um, it's got the pickup hitch on the back. It's got brakes. It's got hydraulic services. There's a little sensor down here as well. So unfortunately, if the pickup hitch is either down or well, this sensor doesn't know that the pickup hitch is up, it will only go like four kilometers an hour, which is quite a clever safety feature. Lots of lights, you can have cameras all across it if you want. This is the little trailer that they've made up, which is really smart. See how the pallet forks kind of kick in here and they've just got a bar across the front to stop them from coming off. All the AdBlue systems under cover so it doesn't get wet. These, what they did notice, because it's now on a Lieber chassis, everything is solid. Internal brakes, so you have to make sure you change the oil. And the cab's got lots of visibility. Um, heated windows all the way around. Doors like a stable door, so both open. The other benefit I really like about it, this, um, the fan automatically blows the other way. So if you're in a shed, it gets all dusty, it automatically runs the fan the other way to clean itself. You can also prompt it to do it when you're in the cab as well. So if we open this up, so it's a Deutz engine, it's all the AdBlue system. Anywhere you see this class power system, it basically means class have bought the rights and they're fully trained to service all this stuff. It's got your standard air intake, washer. This isn't leaking, even though it looks like it's leaking. Add blue, diesel system, government juice. We'll do a quick walk around the cab. Parking hazards, this is how you'd lock the steering. So at the moment, I've got all four wheels turning. This is the standard joystick. So to go forwards, you do that. To go backwards, you do that. You can hear the reversing siren neutral snail to hair to go fast and slow this is for the boom extension one thing i do really like is the soft closed boom so when it's coming back in it slows down just before the end so it doesn't make that bang sound like the other on the back you've got this rocker switch so that is for the services and you can just see those hydraulic pipes twitching so if we had a grab or anything you can stick that on there you can also use automatic tip so if we were scooping something we could press it here and it would always go back to the same position. This is another service on here as well. So you'd be able to use another trailer because there's two hydraulic services at the back. This is isolator for the battery. This is the auto fan reverse button. You've then got your usual cabin heater settings, aircon. There's a little cubby box under here, particularly like this. So this one is a hand throttle. This one sets the max speed of the vehicle. That is a speed limiter, which means you can focus on high revs, low speed, for instances where maybe you're going in a cubicle or you've got a straw bedder or something. Up here, you've got all of the lights. So the main lights, flashing light, different side lights. You see how bright they are? Plenty of visibility. So I'll boom up in a minute and show you, but you've also got this, if it was sunny, can put it all the way down there. Likewise, we can get this all the way out of the way cabin lights. I like the fact that the back window opens. That's a nifty little feature. You can split the door so you can open it like that. Heating the windscreen, you leave these because they are turning off the diesel exhaust. Apparently you can turn them off if you go into a shed or something, but this one is important. So those pins down there, zoom in. So to get those normal pins off like you would on any other machine, you press and hold this down, and then you use the switch that's on the back there, and that would rock those pins out. But you only have to do that to actually get the pins to release. To then put the pins back in, it does it automatically. So yeah, that is the cab. I think they've distributed the switches between kind of down here and up to the two sides really well. I really like it. So this is a seven meter machine, and it's got a four ton capacity. Now, unfortunately, we were hoping to be drilling our spring crops, but as it happens, it snowed. Uh, this was already on order, so it was just a case that it didn't work. Lift him up, boom out.
from a steering wheel perspective. So that gets the steering wheel to go back. You've also got this button here, which gives you a bit more flex in the actual uh, steering wheel there. And then you can twist this and select the height as well. Uh. That is high. One thing I'm not a massive fan of, as stupid as it sounds, I've gone to put the boom in about five times now and I keep hitting the reverse button instead because they're right next to each other. Boom. See, it's so soft, whereas the Mapro would be bobbling by now. This is my visibility as a driver. How hard it was. So when I had the boom slightly higher like this, I had no clue how close the Mapro was. So, once, so when the boom's down, you can just see. But look how good the lights are. Ready? Power! That is bright all the way around. I think moving from a pivot steer to one of these fixed booms, the biggest drawback is always going to be that one engine side where you just can't see. And I assume people watching the channel have probably got rigid boom loaders. Um, I'd imagine you just get used to it, right? Our new pump for the pits arrived from Pumps UK Limited. Ordered and it was here within less than uh, 24 hours. So we've got a new submergible pump. So lots of people mix their muck heaps up just trying to help them degrade. So what we've got here is a um, cherry grab, or as Ollie Bloggs would say, churra, the churra grab. And we're gonna go up and I'm just gonna turn, ours is technically not a muck heap because it's just degraded bales, but we're gonna go up, give it a bit of a spin to see what the class can do. Obviously, as I said, with all this frost on the ground, you can see the ice. We're not in a position to go drilling, so I've got to try and find a couple of jobs for this thing to do. So my first attempt at hooking a trailer on wasn't as easy as I thought, but I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to put the attachment trailer back on the machine, pull it out of the way because they're all mounted from the back. So I'm going to drop the Mapro carriage off the pin and cone over here out of the way. Put this off here, I think. There it goes. So you'll see in the video, I've put the GoPro into the cab. I turned around in this tiny little space and was able to come back onto the trailer. The Mapro wouldn't have been able to do that because we wouldn't have the same level of articulation. That was the first ever time I've used a rigid boom to go onto something. Now, one of the big things with a loader, which is completely different than a pivot steer, is when we want to move left and right, we can just turn the steering wheel and the boom twists. Whereas because this is a rigid body and everything's to the side of you all the time, you can't look down the center. And it's not just about class, you know, for those that aren't into farming or don't know about farming, every system is going to be the same, but it's just when you go from a pivot steer where you're sat in the middle to one of those, it's completely different. I need to grab this cooker, but she's slightly too big to be able to lock round so the time I can get those points and that mirror around the post to connect to that. Obviously we're used to it because we've got New Holland, but there isn't too much space in this cab. The one thing we like about our pivot steers, obviously we've got a buddy seat as well. So I put that up in there, dirty strap in there, but if that was covered, you wouldn't want it in the cab. And obviously the brakes here, the accelerator and the thing to move the steering wheels here, 
so there's just not loads of space. Not quite used to. Little sip and you're ready to go. I'm talking about cold to cold. See, just whiskey that you ever know. Where the beautiful caves grow. I'm talking about cold to cold. Now, Dad is walking just out there. I don't know if you can see him. I'll try and catch up with him. Let's give him a beep. He's quite smooth on the road, I have to say. There he is. We've wrapped it, strapped it on. The indicators are silent, which I don't like. Let's give Dad a little peep. There he is. as well which I'm really happy about. Oh this thing is great. I absolutely love it. So I've just spent all morning moving bits and pieces around. We'll finally go up and start moving that heap. And then the plan afterwards I've got some things I need to take down to the sheep. I put the trailer on a slight angle. Stupid boy. See anything on this. Right, I'm getting the hang of this now. I've turned the heating up, but actually it's a bit warm. I don't like how pins don't seem to fit flush. I'm going to get him down. So this reverse fanny thing. Not quite enough to clear it, is it? Oh yeah, so this is a reverse fan. See it's trying to get all the straw off it. I'd imagine it'd be better if you had just dust out of a grain shed. So these are old bales which basically weren't good enough and they'd all unfortunately rotted and everything else so they weren't good enough for dad to put his name to and it's certainly nothing that you would ever sell to a customer. They're all black and manky, so we put them up here out the way so they can then go back into the soil. Yeah, so that's it. So I'm just bringing the hurdles down. Um, that's ready for the sheep so I can worm them, I can do all their feet, and I also want to crutch them if it ever stops raining. That machine, I think, same height, but slightly wider than the Mat Pro, which means it's a bit of a challenge and I also don't want to mess all this up. So one thing I've noticed then, so you can lift the boom up and you can move the head back and forth. If you're not sat on the seat, you cannot lower it. See, which is quite interesting. Usually these machines for safety, you cannot operate the joystick unless you're sat on the seat. So that if you were jumping out and you just nudged it, you could hurt someone. So that's interesting. So the boom can go up, but not down and you can turn the head back and forth as well. Another interesting point, the guy was saying that they've got a factory in Russia which made a particular type of combine, so they've had to ax those from the prices. And also those booms are made in a particular factory in the Ukraine. 
so they've had to get some other factory to start producing those booms but it's taken a long time because they had to make sure they had all the specialist equipment to do it. So from a service perspective, nice and easy to access all the filters. This guard obviously comes off revealing the belts. Got the other filters down here, easily accessible. And generally you can walk around the whole engine, whereas with other machines, often you have to have special tools and it's very difficult to access them. It's a pity the DEF system's up here because obviously it increases the height by three or four inches. Otherwise the visibility would be far better from the cab. There must be a fair bit of soundproofing because it's quite difficult to actually hear it when it's in the cab. The button to release the pressure on the hydraulic services is up in here, which is quite easy. We had a bit of trouble getting these on. You had to kind of line this bead up as we pushed it down and spun it round. They've also said that the foot brake is a really weird design. It kind of goes in a funny way. So Class Western will cut it off, re-weld it so that the foot is more akin to your kind of normal brake pedal. And there we are, so we've used the machine for four or five days. Things I really like about it, this cab is incredibly quiet. This thing has got a lot of power, so when we were moving that muck heap, you could feel if you had a big enough grab, it wanted to almost move all of it. That's how it kind of felt. On the road, it's incredibly smooth. Putting your foot down, and the machine just glided along, whereas ours, and even with the tractors, they're constantly bouncing from wheel to wheel. This is the largest small chassis one that they do. I also like the fact these lights are incredibly bright. Took them into the shed, pitch black shed, lit it up, and it was just like daylight in there. They're basically like UTV lights. They were so bright. I also like the cab generally. I mean, the functionality, the way you've got certain buttons up here, a clear dash along here, but there's plenty of space. Like my elbows, you know, it's quite a wide cab if you look at it. The joystick's nice and comfortable. I like the fact that the boom comes in and it's almost a soft close. I found that the boom was slow to react. There was a split second delay when I was trying to act to boom in and out. In terms of things that I didn't like, one, you've got all this dead space here, and I know that's not exclusive to class. It's a telehandler problem generally. If you haven't got a pivot steer and you've got more of one of these loadals, then you're always gonna have this dead space. Now, what class have tried to do, obviously you can get cameras, but they put lots of mirrors up, but I've got mirror here, mirror here, boom, and then another mirror stack there. So to create less, it's actually given me five blind spots now because I've got mirror, mirror, boom, mirror, 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 and post. And so it becomes, it's almost more difficult, but I fully appreciate this is not just class. This is just one of these systems. And the AdBlue, unfortunately, has increased the bonnet height probably by four or five inches. When I was going into the shed, I found our roofs are too low for me to have the boom up to see underneath. And if I put it down, the carriage is almost a bit close to the ground. So I was kind of stuck in the middle, having to rely on these mirrors. But generally, the only other things I didn't like, so the forward and reverse button is right next to the boom in and boom out. So sometimes I go to boom in and I put it in reverse. And it was kind of hard to work out for a second because of that delay in the boom. I was like, what's happening? And I constantly had to look down. And I think maybe it's just something you get used to. The other thing I don't like, there's a pedal down here which moves the whole steering wheel. Now that's great, but the problem was I got in with a big coat, it was cold, I've got mucky boots on, and I put my boots in between the accelerator and the pedal. So I didn't really get the accelerator, I slipped off that, and the steering wheel ended up flying away from me rather than just going forwards, which is what I wanted it to do. So in conjunction with the forward reverse problem, booming in and out, and the steering wheel going away from me, it just kind of annoyed me a little bit, but I fully appreciate it's something that you just gotta get used to. All round, I love this machine. I think, you know, definitely seven out of 10. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tim's Cotswold Farm, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.